dating in general. Um, you tweeted, are you based in Boston and single, question mark? And then you pointed to an, uh, a startup Mm -hmm. Singles Night sponsored by Smile Dating App. Cause, I mean, this is jumping around a little bit, but mm -hmm. since, since you mentioned, um, can AI help solve this uh, dating love problem? What do you think? This problem of connection that is part of the human condition. Can AI help that? You yourself are in the search affirming. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I should affirm, like build an AI. Build an AI so that finds love. I think, I think there must be a science behind that first moment you meet a person and you either have chemistry or you don't, right? Like you. Click. I guess that was the question I was asking. Would you put it brilliantly? Is that a science or an art? Ooh, I think there are like there's actual chemicals that get exchanged when pe mm -hmm. two people meet. Oh, well, I don't know about that. But, but okay, right. no, I like how you're changing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, changing your mind as we're describing it. But it feels that way. Right. But it's what science shows us is sometimes we can explain with the rigor the things that feel like magic. Right. So maybe we can remove all the magic. Maybe it's like I, I honestly think, like I said, like Goodreads should be a dating app, which like mm. books. I, I yeah. wonder. I wonder if you look at just like books or content you've consumed. I mean, that's essentially what YouTube does when it does recommend uh, recommendation. If you just look at your footprint of content consumed, if there's an overlap, but maybe interesting difference mm -hmm. with an overlap, there's some, I'm sure this is a machine learning problem that's solvable. <laughs> like this person is very likely to be, not only the, there to be chemistry in the short term, but a good lifelong partner to grow together. I bet you it's a good machine learning problem. We just need the data. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, I actually, I, I, I do think there's so much data about each of us that there ought to be a machine learning algorithm that can ingest all this data and basically say, I think the following 10 people would be interesting connections for you, right? Um, and, and so Smile Dating App kind of took one particular angle, which is humor. It matches people based on their humor styles, which is one of the main ingredients of a successful relationship. Like if you meet somebody and they can make you laugh, like that's a good thing. And if you develop like internal jokes, like inside jokes and you're bantering, like that's fun. Yeah. So <laughs> I think. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely, yeah. Right? definitely. But yeah, that's the, uh, the number of, and the rate of inside joke generation. Uh, you could probably measure that and then optimize it over the first few days. You can right. see. Right, and then. Like, we're just turning this into a machine learning problem. I love it. Uh, but for somebody like you, who's exceptionally successful and busy, um, is there is there science to that aspect of dating? Is it tricky? Is there advice you can give? Oh my God, I'd give the worst advice. Well, I can tell you, like I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> spreadsheet, <laughs> that's spreadsheet. great. <laughs> is that a good or a bad thing? Do you regret the spreadsheet? Uh, well, I don't know. That's What's the debatable. name of the spreadsheet? Is it love? <laughs> it's the date track, dating tracker. Or something. Dating it's tracker? Like very, it's very like. Love tracker. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a rating system, I'm sure. Yeah, there's like weights and stuff. <sighs> and it's too close to home. Oh, is it? Do you also have a spreadsheet? Well, I don't have a spreadsheet, but I would, now that you say it, it yeah. seems like a good idea. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, turning into data. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do wish that somebody else had a spreadsheet about me hmm. if you know if it was like a, a, like like i said like you said uh convert collect a lot of data about us in a way that's privacy preserving that i own the data i can control it and then use that data to find not i mean not just romantic love but uh collaborators mm -hmm. friends all that kind of stuff it seems like the data is there right uh the that's the problem social networks are trying to solve, but I think they're doing a really poor job. Even Facebook tried to get into right. a dating app uh, business. And I think there's so many components to running a successful company that connects human beings. And part of that is, you know, uh, having engineers that care about the human side, right? As, right. as you know, extremely well, it's not, it's not easy to find those, but, but you don't also don't want just people that care about the human. They also have to be good engineers. So it's like, right, you have to find this, this, this beautiful mix. And for some reason, just empirically speaking, it's, it 
people who have not done a good job of that, of building companies like that. And it must mean that it's a difficult problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Dating apps, it seems difficult. Okay, Cupid, Tinder, all those kind of stuff. They seem to find, of course they work, but they seem to not work as well as I would imagine is possible. Like right. with data, wouldn't you be able to find better human connection? It's like arranged marriages on steroids, essentially. Right, right. <laughs> arranged by machine learning algorithm. Arranged by machine learning algorithm, but but not a superficial one. I think a lot of the dating apps out there are just so superficial. They're just matching on like high level criteria that aren't ingredients for successful partnership. But you know what's missing though, too? I don't know how to fix that. The serendipity piece of it. Like, how do you engineer serendipity? Like this random, like chance encounter, and then you fall in love with the person. Like, I don't know how a dating app can can do that. So there has to be a little bit of randomness. Maybe every 10th match is just a, you know, yeah, somebody that, that the algorithm wouldn't have necessarily recommended, but it's it allows for a little bit of... Well, it can also... You know, it can also trick you into thinking it's serendipity mm. by like somehow showing you a tweet of a person mm -hmm. that he thinks you'll match well with, but do it accidentally as part of another search. Right. And like you just notice it, like, and then you get, it, it, you go down a rabbit hole and you connect them in, outside the app too. Like so, you connect with this person outside the app somehow. So it's just, it creates that moment of meeting. Um, of course, you have to think of, from an app perspective, how you can turn that into a business. But I think ultimately, a business that helps people find love in any way, mm -hmm. like that's what Apple was about, create products right. that people love, right. that's beautiful. I mean, it, that's you gotta make money somehow. If you, right. if you help people fall in love personally with the product, find self-love or right. love another human being, you're gonna make money. Yeah. You're gonna figure out a way to make money. Um, I just feel like the dating apps often will optimize for something else than love. Mm -hmm. It's the same with social networks. They optimize for engagement right. as opposed to like a deep, meaningful connection um, that's ultimately grounded in like personal growth, mm -hmm. you as a human being growing and all that kind of stuff. 